Every day is somebody's birthday. It's also somebody's death day. There's not much space between the two, so you want to make the most of it. Given this breath coming and going out, what would be the best thing to do with it? There's that famous scene where the Buddha says, the monk should practice mindfulness of death. And one monk says, I already do that. And the Buddha says, how do you do that? And the monk says, every day, I, once a day, I remind myself I'm going to die. Then another monk says, oh, I do that twice a day. And then it gets shorter and shorter, and to finally get one monk who says, every time I breathe in, every time I breathe out, I tell myself, I could die with the next breath, so I better practice right now. And the Buddha said, of those monks, only the last one was heedful. All the rest were heedless. Time slips away, slips away. You can't put your foot in the same river even once. It, things change so quickly. So what are you going to do with this time as it slips away? You're trying, going to try to find something that you can hold on to. Now there's that image in the canon of someone being swept down the river, and he tries to hold on to grasses and shrubs on the side of the river. But the grasses cut his hands or else they pull out. That stands for holding on to the aggregates, your body, feelings, perceptions, thought constructs, acts of consciousness. These things slip away, slip away. And sometimes when you hold on to them, they cut you. So you've got to learn how to hold on to the path. Try to make every action something that fits into the path one way or another. And that'll get you out of the river. Here again, there's an image in the canon, the, the person who crosses over the river and gets to the firm ground on the other side. On this side there are snakes and vipers and thieves. Everything associated with the aggregates, everything associated with your self-identity. The other side is safe, so you want to get over to that other side. So what do you do? You take the things on this side, again, those branches and leaves and twigs that you're going to hold on to, and you make them into a raft, the eightfold path. And that way you can cross over the river and get to the other side safely. Now the river is composed of what? It's the flood of sensuality, the flood of views, the flood of becoming, the flood of ignorance. But you're going to have to hold on to some views as part of that path. It's part of that raft that you're getting across. So you hold on to right view, and the right view tells you You've got duties here in the present moment. So if the time comes to go, you're caught in the middle of duty, doing your duty rather than caught in the middle of not doing your duty or going against your duty. Ideally, you want to get to the other side first, but if you don't make it all the way, at least be caught in the middle of doing your duty. That way there'd be no regrets. This amount of time you have, you've used it well. And then you can pick up where you've left off. It's when there's a lot of regret that it's hard to get back to that spot where you left off. So don't do anything that would be a cause for regret. Use your time wisely.